Right, welcome to uh, this detachments rated video. So I'm going to go through the detachments uh, in a quicker overview. Uh, the idea is, and I'm going to rate them. So I'm going to give you going from my worst choice, and I think this is going to be a controversial one, uh, and then going through to my top choice, what I think the strongest and uh, weakest detachments are. I'll give my reasons for that. Uh, you're welcome to leave your own comments below. Change the order and list around, especially if you're an experienced Necrons player or you've been up against Necrons, then you can say, yeah, this attachment is good, this one's not so good. You can agree with my list, change the order or completely uh, offer your own uh, choices in uh, the comments section below. For discount 40k, do check out gamingfigures.com, link for them below. Uh, it's for discount 40k, Age of Sigma, other gaming systems, paints and accessories and so on. Uh, and there are local gaming stores, so if you support them, uh, it's great to help out these local gaming stores. And by all means, you can visit them if you're in the middle of England, Middlesbrough direction. Uh, I'll leave a link for their Facebook page uh, below. They have a great gaming uh, set up there. You can pop in and see them play some games uh, at the store. So, detachments. There's five of them for the Necrons. A lot of codexes are running six, uh, but there's five uh, here. So... We'll go with the worst first. It's not gonna be, I, I'm gonna get criticized for this. I think the worst one is Annihilation Legion. I just don't see it being that great. Um, so the main rule then, I'm gonna go through all the rules. If you want all the rules, I go through every rule, every uh, enhancement, every stratagem had in part one for the Codex Review. Uh, just to pick out a few things, Annihilation Legion. Uh, so the army rule is Annihilation Protocol. Each time a destroyer cult or flayed one's unit from army declares a charge, you can reroll the charge roll. If one or more targets of that charge are below half strength, it's plus one to the charge roll as well. So basically, that certain type of unit. So this detachment is going to go better if you are going to heavily theme your list around destroyer cult type units. So um, Scorpec destroyers, for example, Fidian destroyers, you're running those kind of units. Built-in reroll charges is is all right. It's okay um, if it's below half strength an enemy unit. So as the game goes on, it's plus one to charge roll as well, which is okay. If you're not running those kind of units, there is no bonus for you. Um, so really, you've got to go for a strong theme uh, and run plenty of destroy cult type units, flayed one type units as well. Then as uh, the enhancements was not that impressed. Uh, it's ingrained superiority. Uh, it's Necron's model, each time modern unit makes an attack on a critical wound, improves the AP uh, by one. So not even like full on AP minus one. It's you've got to get the critical to get that wound coming through. So it's, it's okay, but it's not that great. Uh, next, Eternal Madness is okay. Fight on death on a four plus. It's all right. Uh, Solus Reaper is another one, destroy cult model only, so it's limited to destroy cult only. Each time an enemy unit of engaged range of the bearer's unit selected to fall back, raw dice on a 3+, plus. you can't fall back that phase, you must remain stationary, so try and get away from them, it's a 3+, plus that can't move. So again, it's it's okay. Usually the opponent has some kind of remedy for that, uh, they'll send another unit in to try and get you, uh, to try and rescue the unit instead of taking the risk of pulling them back. Nothing happens to you if you fail. You just don't pull away. So you've got, you've got a chance of just escaping and nothing happening. And then, uh, again, Eldritch Nightmare. Destroy cut one to one at the start of the fight phase. Each enemy unit of engagement range of the bearer's unit must take a battle shock test. So it's okay. So these are all right. Then, just wasn't that impressed with the stratagems. Uh, this one here in Sanity's Eye was okay. Your opponent's shooting phase just after the unit has shot. One destroy cult flayed one unit from your army. Uh, that had one or more models destroyed. Uh, the result is you can take make a normal move. And you must end up moving as close as possible to the enemy units. So you can make a normal move and surge towards them, which is quite cool. I guess if you combine that with reroll charges, it's alright. So I'm not saying this is a bad detachment. It's just... <sighs> It could be higher than that. Again, this isn't a bad detachment. It's all right. But I think the reward is there if you really go and push hard and max out on flayed ones, destroy cult type units. I think to, to get the best out of this, you've got to go like triple 
destroy a cult units, triple flayed ones, right? and then try and go for like the swamping push, just drive at your opponent, use insanity desire, reroll the charges, but not just like a certain, a few units get it, but you've got to go like army wide as much as you can right, to make this potent enough. So if you do that, I think the potence is there. But I put it at number five, it's probably a controversial choice. I've heard people speak very highly of Annihilation Legion. Right, the next one, I'm going in reverse order. So that's number five. The next one is this one, Canoptic Court. So this one add, is where you're running the power matrix. So certain areas of the battlefield are considered to be in your army's power matrix as follows. Your opponent's, uh, your deployment zone is always within your power matrix. You're always going to get that benefit within your own deployment zone. So it's usually like a quarter of the table. Um, at the start of any phase, you control at least half of the objective markers within no man's land. Uh, then no man's land is considered within the power matrix. There is kind of that pressure on you to make sure you do control the middle of the battlefield. Which Necrons are pretty good at doing that. And then the same for... Uh, you dominate the objectives in your opponent's deployment zone, uh, you can activate that. That doesn't happen so often. There really is that battle for no man's land. So one of the downsides for this, I've rated it a bit lower, is that it's quite restrictive on who gets this bonus. Uh, each time order in a cryptic or canoptic unit for army makes an attack, your real hit rolls of one. So that is army wide, even if you're not within your power matrix, which is all right. Uh, if such a unit is wholly within your army's Power Matrix, if you do find yourself in that zone, you can reroll the hit roll instead. And that is for shooting or close combat. So it's pretty good. It's quite restrictive on who gets it, plus the tricky nature of whether you get the Power Matrix or not. If your opponent's doing well and blocking you out of No Man's Land, you're not going to get it. So tricky and then limited is why I've kept this one down. Uh, Enhancements, the first one's quite good. Cryptech model only. Models in the bearers unit have the infiltrator's ability. That's so, so good. Being able to uh, deploy further up the board like a big blob of wraiths with a Cryptech. Uh, being able to already deploy further up the table and then move off straight away. Uh, or to sit straight on a, a no man's land objective immediately, deploy them on it. Uh, it's a really good one. So Dimensional Sanctum is an excellent uh, enhancement. Also number three, the Auto Divinator. Cryptech model only. Each time the opponent gains a CP as a result of an ability, you, on a 2+, plus you get a CP. CPs are so useful, so precious in games. It's the ability to do that. You don't need to be in range of anything. You just get it on a 2+. Plus. And it's like, it's not rare, because it's like, any time they gain a CP as a result of any ability, you roll D6 on 2+, plus, you get a CP. So it's, it's going to happen a fair bit in games. Which is great, keep the CP flowing in. And uh, so then... For, uh, yeah, Strashum. So, uh, Sonosha of Eradication. It's two CP at the start of your shooting phase or the fight phase. It's flexible. Uh, one Cryptech or Canoptic unit from your army that's wholly within your army's power matrix. So, you've got to be within that zone. You've got to have activated and to end of that phase weapons. Uh, yeah, this is a really good one. The weapons get devastating wounds. Now, this is shooting or fight phase. And if you've got some kind of, um, if you've got lots of attacks, it's great. And anything that's going to give you, like, the re-roll, the wound roll, where you can take lots of attacks and fish for those devastating wounds, trying to get lots of sixes, makes this one really, really good. So, uh, but it has to be in a cryptic or canoptic unit. So it does limit as to who gets that. And the matrix has to be running as well. So it's kind of a, it's that tricky. This is the impression I get with this one. It's tricky to make sure everything's just, just right for this to work. Uh, the other one, so that was okay. And and the other one is, uh, I like to counter temporal shift on CP, your opponent's shooting phase, just after the unit selects its targets. One canoptic, so you really do need to build this, this list around canoptic type units to get the best out of this. One canoptic unit from your army that was selected as a target of one of the attack unit's attacks. Um, this is the shooting phase. At the end of that phase, uh, your units can only be selected uh, if the enemy, if the attacking units are in 12. So it's like a shutdown, it's like turning you into a lone operative. You don't need to be within your zone. Just the limitation on it is it's for specifically uh, canoptic type units. But again, I'm thinking of wraiths. So now you've got abilities to infiltrate them right up the board. Your ability to make them disappear, really good. 
So I, I say strengths in this one for sure. The Canoptic Court. I would I would say, and just to make it clear, I mean, I'm rating these in order, but uh, my preference here. But none of these attachments are bad. I want to make that clear. And really, none of them are too average. They're all okay to, to excellent. I, they're all they're all good enough. Canoptic Court. Then that's at number four. So next is let's back this way. Yeah, I've put Hypercrypt Legion at number three. This is a good one. So you get hyperphasing. So this one, and this one revolves, the reason why I've come to this one here is because you're thinking of Tent Edition. Tent Edition is the ability to uh, get units onto No Man's Land objectives quickly, hold them, and be able to take No Man's Land objectives, and also units being able to turn up at any point on the battlefield Add it quite quickly. So the ability to relocate is very, very useful in Tent Edition for secondaries. Getting into the enemy's deployment zone, turn up on a certain flank, turn up next to a certain building, uh, performing actions, uh, take an enemy no man's land objective, uh, hold multiple no man's land objectives. Those kind of things is where you're picking up secondaries. So any any list, any detachment that's going to help you do that is strong. And so this is what this one does: hyperphasing. So end of your at the end of your opponent's turn, you can select a number of Necron units from your army. Uh, so this is broad in its application. This is any Necron unit. So great, it's not restricted to like Canoptic only, for example. Add, so you can't be of an engagement range. The maximum number of units depends on the size of the battle. So usually it's three for Strike Force, like a 2,000 point game, three units. That's really good, like three units is like a good chunk of your army. And once you've made your selections, you can remove those units from the battlefield and place them in strategic reserves. Now, with this one, bear in mind, you go into strategic reserves. You don't gain deep strike. So don't think you can remove any unit and then they deep strike back in. If you remove a unit from the battlefield, you could remove them from the middle of the board. When they come back in, they will walk back on uh, to your own deployment zone, deploying them in six, a flank, or if it's later on in the game, they could get in uh, to the opponent's deployment zone. Downside to this is that they are walking on, uh, which can be a problem. You're around the edges of the table, not the middle. Uh, the other downside is the opponent, if they're wise, will start deploying units around the edges to stop you from coming on the flanks, to stop you from getting into their deployment zone. So there is a shutdown option uh, if the opponent's clever enough. But they can't keep you out everywhere. You know, you're going to get on the board uh, at some point. Now there are remedies to this built into this detachment. So there are ways to counter that. So the enhancements are great. Arisen Tyrant, Necrons model only. Again, it's nice and broad, these ones. They aren't specific. This is a nice broad detachment, this one. Necrons model only. Each time model in the unit, bearer's unit makes attack, you real hit rolls of one. Fine. Uh, if the bearer's unit was set up on the battlefield this turn, which is, you know, can happen lot higher chance of this detachment. Uh, you can reroll the hit roll. So it's a great ambush type ability here. And I'm just checking, makes an attack. Yeah, this is shooting all close combat. So really good enhancement. Another really good enhancement here is this one. The hyperspatial transfer node. Necrons model only each time the bearer's unit advances, do not make an advance roll. Uh, it's a guaranteed six. It's nice for speed around the table to be able to get to where you need to go. And then osteoclave fulcrum. Necrons model only models in the bearer's unit have deep strike ability. Now this is this is great. So now you can take a unit that usually would be walking on, say for unit Necron Warriors, for example. Now all of a sudden, the whole unit gains deep strike. So you've got a unit Necron Warriors that can be removed from the battlefield, go into reserve for free, part of the detachment, and then deep strike back in. So excellent to have that. So detach rules looking good. Some superb uh, enhancements. Then I won't go for all the stratagems, you can check out the video for that. But quantum deflection is a good one. Your opponent's shooting phase or fight phase, just after enemy unit selected its targets, one Necron's vehicle from your army. You gain a 4 plus invulnerable save. Great for helping out things like monoliths and so on. Excellent, only a CP to get a 4 plus invul. And just check in, yeah, shooting phase or fight phase, you're, you're caught out in close combat, give yourself a 4 plus invulnerable save for a CP. Superb. So quantum deflection is a really good one. The other, another good one here is Cosmic Precision. Yeah. Uh, your movement phase. One Necron's unit from your army that's arriving 
by deep strike or hyperphasing abilities this phase. Unit can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than three inches horizontally away from enemy models, so you can go for a very tight deep strike in. Uh, it also means that it is uh, a deep striking unit or a hyperphasing unit. So a unit that wouldn't usually be able to deep strike in can now, and they can do so very tight to the opponent within three inches. It's great for like snatching objectives, ambushing with really good firepower and so on. You can't charge. It's very similar to the Inceptor's rule for Space Brains, that, that meteoric descent where you can come in tight. Uh, for a CP, you can do it there. Another excellent strategy. So again, I've put this at number three, but this isn't a bad detachment. I would say this is a good, a very good detachment. Hypercrypt Legion's a good one. Necrons have got some strong detachments, there's no doubt about it. And for, for a strong army as well, they're core build units, being able to uh, restore wounds, resurrect models. Very strong. And then they've got some great detachments. Hypercrypt Legion, this could well be higher up in the, the ratings. I'm sure there'll be people disagree with the ones I've gone for, but I think Hypercrypt Legion uh, stronger Annihilation Legion. Right, there's, there's, there's some great abilities here. So we'll move on. Number two is the Obeisance Phalanx. This looks, this is potent. Worthy foes. In your command phase, select one enemy unit. To start of your next command phase, each time an Overlord, a Lich Guard, or Triarch unit from your army makes an attack that targets that unit, add one to the wound roll. Plus one to the wound roll is great. Um, Usually in 10th edition, or in a, in a game, uh, there is a certain point on the table, a certain unit that you really need to get rid of. You know, this turn, my um, spy turn three, I've got to destroy that particular unit. Uh, it's got to go. This will help you do that. You're picking any unit you're trying to, gonna take out. Um, Overlord models, fine. You know, there's, there's a number of options to go for that. Lich Guard, great. Triarch type units, have got a pretty good spectrum of units. Triarch Praetorians. Uh, Triarch Stalkers, they're all going to get that ability as well. Again, it's, you're going to get much more out of this if you theme your army around those certain unit types. So the Beastian's Phalanx, the second enhancement was good on Flinching Wheel, the overall model. The Bearer's melee weapons have precision. Yeah, an anti-infantry 5+. plus. Great, so now you can try and root out enemy characters or enemy units. So that was a good one. And number four, Eternal Conqueror. Um, each time a model in the bearer's unit makes an attack that targets an enemy unit within range of an objective mark, you can reroll the hit roll. You're after objectives in the game. The ability to reroll hit rolls, great. You really could set up a unit combo that's designed to go after uh, an objective. And so you're going to get the buff there for that. It's got to be an overall model though. Stratagems wise, there's a couple of okay ones. Enslaved Artifice. Shooting phase or fight phase. One Necron unit from your army, excluding Titanic, because it's not selected to shoot or fight this phase. Uh, each time model makes attack, a modified hit roll of five pluses for criticals. Uh, you then have, this one was okay, nano assembly protocols. Your opponent shoots your phase or fight phases after enemy unit selected its targets. One Necron's vehicle from your it selected as the target one more of the attacking unit's attacks. Uh, it's minus one for the damage characteristic. Really helpful to try and uh, reduce the damage coming through. And there's some great ones here. Suffer no rival. This, one, this one's like a brilliant one. Fight phase. For a CP, one Lich Guard a Triarch unit from your army. So imagine a squad of 10 Triarch Praetorians with their particle uh, casters and void blades. So like 40 attacks. At the end of the phase, melee weapons gain precision for the unit. Like, oh, proper assassination. Going after characters is very disruptive. The unit. It's very dis disheartening. You know, the unit, the opponent's built a unit to bodyguard a character, and usually they're safe. But now you've got abilities just to crack open these characters and root them out. <laughs> That's good fun. Um, Suffer no rival, and then this one here, I think, was a really good one. Territorial obsession. Uh, yeah, this one was good. Your command phase one lich guard a triarch Praetorian's unit from your army to this next command phase. Add one to the OC control. Brilliant. If it's a vehicle, it's plus three TOC control. Again, for this one is very built around helping you do tactically well on the table. Um, yeah, it's just good. Good detachment. I put it at number two. And I think this is a very good one. So for number one, I have stuck with Awakened Dynasty. There's definitely contenders for the top spot though. 
the ones we've looked at, some of those attachments are very, very good. And perhaps number the number one slot should be taken by another detachment. But I'll, I'll sing the praises of Awakened Dynasty. She has a, a simple, broad spectrum buff going on here. So, command protocols. Necron's character model is leading this unit. It's plus one to the hit roll. Now, that's going to be for shooting in close combat. It's any kind of Necron character with any kind of Necron unit. So, I, I often run, I run this at the moment, and for my detachment, I'm running. Uh, Necrons have access to cheap characters, and so you put a cheap character in a unit. Overlords are quite you know, non-expensive. Uh, for example, Scorpec Lord, not too bad. Add them in, plus one to hit roll uh, for shooting and for close combat. And so if you're running like three, four, five characters, dot them in your key units. A unit of Wraiths, for example, put a Cryptek in there. The Cryptek gives them all plus one to hit roll for shooting and close combat. That's a great buff. It's nice and simple. Your characters are usually well protected inside those units. That buff's going to continue on usually for a good while as well. So I like it for its simplicity. And plus one to hit rolls is strong. Your Necron Warrior is going up to three ups to hit. All your elite Killy Infantry type units, Scorpac Destroyers, all, all of a sudden just boosting up to twos to hit, which is fantastic. Veil of Darkness, the relocate ability is great. Add a good enhancement. As we have Phasal Subjugator is a good one. Uh, so whilst the friendly Necron's unit excluding characters within six inches of the bearer, uh, it's plus one to hit roll. So it's like this this ability here, plus one to hit roll with a character of unit, but now it goes on to a character and it's actually an influence bubble, so to capture multiple units, um, which is really good. And then the four plus feel no pain is so strong for a Necron's model. I usually put it on something like Scorpec Lord, uh, just to make him really tanky. Then. As I talked about making these characters tanky, 4 plus feel no pain will hop straight over to here. And there is some strong stratagems. Protocol of the Eternal Revenant. So on Necron's infantry character model, such as a Scorpic Lord, you've given him a 4 plus feel no pain. And I've, as we've seen it in games, really actually turns into like a one man army, this lonely character. 4 up feel no pain. Remember, he's able to resurrect wounds back onto himself with reanimation protocols. And this one, if he does die, any phase, Necron's infantry character model from your army that was just destroyed, you can use the stratagem on the model even though it's been destroyed, they just get back up. You don't even roll the dice, just automatically get back up. You've used this in games plenty of times, it's really, really good. Um, I think you have like... Uh, range ...with half of its starting wounds. But bear in mind, you've got reanimation protocols, so you can start topping the wounds back up again. Now it is limited that you can't use that again on the same model, uh, but you can use it on every character model throughout the game. So even in, there's times in games where you're going to resurrect that character, that one, that one, just for a CP at a time. So Protocol of the Eternal Reverence, excellent. Another good one is Protocol of the Undying Legions, being able to, in the middle of a fight, uh, shooting or fight phase, just after the enemy unit's finished, not you don't have to wait until the whole uh, end of the whole phase. You can just interrupt and then just resurrect more models or work more wounds back onto the squad to try and help keep them alive. And if anything that can help Necrons stay alive longer, in the overall scheme of things for a game, is really good. When Necrons can become stronger in the later turns as they restore models and wounds back onto damaged units, the opponent can't do that usually. So Necrons become stronger in the later turns of the game, which is great for dominating the board. At the later stages of battle, then reaping in points for secondaries and primaries. Uh, so those are good. There's other good supporting ones as well. Protocol of the Hungry Void is very good. Extra can minus one in close combat. Fight phase only, yeah. That helps try and get past armor of contempt that's been played. You can shut it back down again with that stratagem. Um, so those are good. So I've, I've said this is good because I like the raw, it's nice and straightforward. There's some great enhancements and there are some very, very helpful stratagems as well. But I will say I'd, it certainly was tight choosing this. And it may well be the case that those other detachments should be at the top. Annihilation Legion, I'm not convinced by it. The Obedience Phalanx, I think, is good. Uh, as we've seen, the Hypercrypt Legion uh, there. Also, uh, is another good one I put at number three. But that's my top choices. Uh, by all means, leave your own comments. And if you think Annihilation Legion is really good, do say so. Let us know in the comments 
comment section and say, yeah, actually, no, this is a good detachment here. This is the reasons why. And you may be a fan of using this. Give us some examples in your games where this is, has uh, done well. Do let us know. Leave your own rated uh, detachment. So let us know what your favorite, least favorite are in the comment section below. Do share your experience that other Necrons players uh, can pick up some wisdom uh, from your own games. So that's the rated detachments video. I, I do rate the units, you can check out that video as well for more in depth uh, to see all the rules for the detachments uh, then do check out the codex review part one and to see all of the units uh, then check out the unit review part two of the codex review that uh, should be live on the channel as well it's a content bomb that's gone out for the necrons just to give you a good spread of information around the new units and codex and then for discount 40k it's gamingfigures.com keep a look out for more videos uh, on the channel thanks for watching and tune in next time